Welcome to Online eKids 2020, Lesson 3, Be Respectful, Speak Well, Saturday 6th of June at 2pm. Hi children, Uncle Yap and Auntie Chilling again. Yes, God loves you, your family loves you, Uncle and Auntie love you too. Hi, 亲爱的小朋友们, E-Kids的老师们都很爱你们. 今天是我们E-Kids的第三堂课, 我们要学习, 注意自己所说出来的话, 我们每天都会说很多话, 而且, 每一句话都会带出影响力，所以我们要学习说对的话、好的话。在开始之前，我们请安哥亚为我们做一个开始的祷告。Come, let us pray together. Father God, uh, teach our children to respect and honor Your name. Teach them how to do so, starting from their home. Starting from respecting and honoring their grandparents, their daddy and mommy, their brothers and sisters. So we commit them, commit to this lesson uh, uh, to you and pray that uh, you will guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are going to teach you guys a new song which is Peace Like a River. The melody goes I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. Okay, so the lyrics are I've got peace like a river, I've got love like an ocean, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Now we are going to teach you guys some action. You can invite your parents or your siblings to join along. Let's start! Now raise both your hands. First action, second action, third action, fourth action, fifth action, sixth action, seventh action, eighth action. Okay, we start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's add in the song. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. Hey, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean in my soul. Hey, hey, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. Are you guys ready? Let's speed up! I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. Hey, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean in my soul. Hey, hey, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. Children, did you guys enjoy the prayer song? Yes! Now, let's come into a time of worship.
Hello, boys and girls. A very good afternoon to all of you. Welcome back to our third Ikes lesson. Uh, it's great to have all of you all back here with us today. It is now storytelling time with me, Uncle Yao Chong. And today, for the third lesson, we are going to look into the topic of being respectful and speak well. Before we start, shall we just commit the time to our Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Father, for this time uh, that we can come together to learn English as well as to learn your word. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you be with us and that, Lord, you bless us with a fun and wonderful time learning English as well as learning the importance of being respectful and to speak well. We pray that, Lord, you continue to grant us understanding. We commit our time to your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first part of the lesson is about being respectful. Respectful in Chinese is called Jun Zhong. It means to always think positively of people regardless of their family background, their personal background, their social status, whether they are rich or they are poor, regardless of the occupation that they hold. It means the jobs that they do or work to earn a living, as long as what they do is right and lawful. Being respectful also means to care for people's well-being and their feelings in the way we talk to them, the way we relate to them, and the way we treat them. Let's look at a few examples to understand what being respectful means. The first example is taken in a classroom's, uh, no, in a library's uh, setup. Here there are two pictures. The picture on the left shows two girls talking, I believe, quite loudly. 
because you see that the guy in front is trying to use his fingers to actually shut his ears to close out this to shut off the noise uh, created by the girls so so obviously the girls are making noise and those noises are uh, affecting the guy from concentrating in his studies and that is not very considerate now the picture on the right shows a group of students studying by themselves quietly they are not talking or playing with each other um, they are not disturbing each other so boys and girls of these two pictures which do you think is the behaviors that we need to adopt when we are in a library which of these two do you think is a respectful behavior yes the picture on the right is the respectful behavior that we need to adopt when we are in a library because we should not be be noisy and affecting people who are trying to study trying to concentrate in their studies the next example just imagine that we see an old lady uh, by the road trying to cross the road and because she's old she's having a difficult time crossing the road now what do you think is the respectful thing to do here you have two responses from two different boys so the picture on the left shows a boy happily helping the old lady cross the road now the picture on the right you see a little boy who not only refuses to help the lady cross the road he is belittling and looking down at the old lady who is struggling to cross the road and jeering at her boys and girls so which of these two behaviors are is respectful yes the boy in the picture on the left is exhibiting a respectful behavior helping the auntie the old lady cross the road in the third example imagine that you're hosting a party you've invited your friends now you have two friends that you've invited and, and one of them appeared in his pajamas. I think he just woke up and he did not even brush his teeth and he did not even comb his hair and he appeared at, at your party. And then you have another friend who appeared at your party very nicely groomed, very nicely dressed. Now as a host of the party, who do you think of these two friends of yours, who do you think respects you more? Who, who of among these two who is being respectful and who is not being respectful obviously the friend on the right uh, the friend on the right is the more respectful friend because he appeared nicely dressed and nicely groomed all right so similarly when we go to church for example for sunday services the way we dress does reflect our respect towards people and and more more importantly towards god we should at least groom ourselves properly and dress properly when we go to church because that is a sign of respect towards god so being respectful is not just limited by the actions and by our behaviors it is also it is also the way we present ourselves this reflect our respect towards a particular person or a particular event the second part of today's lesson is about speaking well. Speaking well can mean being polite. In Chinese, being polite is yo li mao. Some examples of being polite. When you are given something or someone offered you a particular help or service, it is polite to say thank you. When we want something or we require some help from people, it is polite for us to use the word please or when we did something wrong and we are being scolded and corrected it is not polite for us to start jumping on the bed yelling screaming and crying instead it is polite for us to listen reflect and apologize for the things that we've done wrong also being polite means we do not use foul language and we are not rude in our speech speaking well can also mean speaking positive words and encouraging words 
Encourage in Chinese is called Gu Li. Let me give you an example of what speaking positive words and being encouraging mean. Imagine yourself preparing for a race that you really look forward to. You've trained yourself so hard, you've tried so hard, and on the day of the race, you run as best as you can with all your energy and all your might. But unfortunately, you did not come out as champion or the winner. You came in second, right? Now then, there are two responses from your friends, okay? Uh, as shown in the picture uh, here, right? You have one uh, picture on the left showing a, uh, a response where a friend of yours came up to you and say, you know what? You did very well today, right? It is, do not worry about what the, the results today because you have given all your best. Don't give up. Try your best next time. And who knows? You will become a champion. You will become a winner. That is the first response that you got from a friend as depicted in the picture on the left. The second type of response that you got was, for example, shown by the, by the girl in the picture on the right. Your friend tells you, you know what, you're such a loser. This L, loser. Don't even try, right? Even no matter how hard you try, you will always remain a loser. Let me ask you, boys and girls the response between uh, uh, comparing the response in the picture on the left and on the right. Which response do you think is a positive and encouraging response? Which of this response is a response that you, as the runner, who unfortunately did not win that day, but you did put in a lot of effort, which of this response do you hope to receive from your friends, family, members, or teachers? Of course, the response in the, shown in the picture on the left is the positive and encouraging response. And that is a response that we should adopt to show, to demonstrate being positive and encouraging. So now you might ask, why do I have to be respectful and speak well? Why? Well, boys and girls, when we say positive words, we encourage people, we build up people. When we build up people, people will, will feel good and people will want to improve further, right? To develop further, to be better. When we say negative words, remember the girl who tells us, uh, who, who, whose response uh, to our, 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 our failure, telling us that we are losers and we will remain losers. Now, that is, a very that, that is a very negative response. Those negative words, does it make you happy? Does it, do those words encourage you to, to do better? No, right? It literally destroys your self-esteem and also your morale. So remember, boys and girls, that words, careless words, and hurt, can hurt people and destroy a person. It is not wise for us, therefore, to actually show disrespect to people. It is very important for us to be respectful to people. Instead of saying careless words and hurtful words, we should start saying positive words and words of encourage, encouragement because they build us up. They make us feel good. They build us up. They encourage us to be better in future. Therefore, boys and girls, let's start to respect people. And how do we do so? By speaking live words. Words which are positive and encouraging and not words which are damaging and discouraging. Children, do you know that God also respects us and speaks well of us always? In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, God said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Now, what he meant was, he loved us in the past, he loved us yesterday, he loves us today, 
and he will continue to love us tomorrow, days after tomorrow, years after tomorrow, till eternity. That's how long and how lasting his love is for us. He even referred to us, his children, as the apple of his eye. Now, when we call someone or something as the apple of our eye, it basically means those things or that person is something or someone that we truly cherish and truly love a lot. So when God refers us as the apple of his eye, that shows how much he loved us. He sees us as someone that he truly, truly cherish and truly, truly concerned about. In Psalms 139, verse 17 and 18, he even said that his thought towards us are as countless as the sands on the seashore. Can you imagine that? Can we even count how many grains of sands there are by the seashore? It's impossible to count, right? Because there are just too many of them. And that is the extent of God's love towards us. It is immeasurable. So therefore, boys and girls, just as God respects us and loves us so much, we too must respect God and speak well of Him. That means we must be very careful not to misuse His name. It is re even written in Exodus chapter 20 as the third commandment that God gave to us that we shall not misuse the name of the Lord our God. So how can we misuse his name, you may ask? What does it mean by misusing his name? Well, an example of misusing God's name is to use his name and make false claims. It can also mean that we use his name in an inappropriate manner, such as cursing or saying bad things. So who does this commandment apply to? It applies to all of us. You may even ask when and where we should not use his name in vain. Well, it is all the time and at every instances and every places that we are. Why should we not use his name in vain? Why did God give that as the commandment to not use his name uh, inappropriately? Well, it's because there is power in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus can even break every spiritual chain that is actually bounding us. Let me now tell you a story that demonstrates the power of the name of God. This is a story about Elijah, a prophet who prayed and used God's name respectfully. And as he called upon God's name, God appeared and demonstrated his power to his people. This happened during King Ahab's reign. Now, King Ahab is a wicked and bad king. He does not serve the true and living God. Instead, he serves and worships an idol by the name of Baal. Now, in previous lesson, we learned about the word idol. Idols are things or images which are created and worshipped as though they are God when in fact they are not God. King Ahab built altar and temples to worship this idol. He even turned God's people from worshipping the true and living God to worshipping Baal. Not only that, he even had 450 false prophets for this idol. Now this greatly displeases God. This prophet Elijah was sent to meet with King Ahab and the 450 false prophets. And a spiritual challenge was given by Elijah at the Mount Carmel to see which God is indeed the true and living God. Elijah spoke to the people who were gathered at Mount Carmel. How long will you waver between two opinions? Now, Elijah said so because at that point of time, the people were worshipping both God as well as the idol Baal. 
Now, that is not right. As we learn in the first commandment, God says, there should only be one God. You should only serve me, as in serve God, as the only true and living God. And there shall be no other God apart from the true and living God. <coughs> true and, living God. and it is not right to serve both God and Baal. So Elijah told the people, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if you think that Baal, which is the idol, is God, then follow Baal. Don't follow God. With that said, the people said nothing and remained quiet, as they do not really know what to choose and what to do. So the spiritual challenge at Mount Carmel was a, was a challenge between one God's prophet versus 450 idle false prophets. Elijah asked for two bulls. Then he turned to the false prophets. Choose one of these bulls. Cut them and lay them on the altar. But do not burn them. I will pick the other bull and place it at my altar. Then you shall call upon the name of your God, Baal, and I will call upon the name of my God, and let's see which God answers. The God who answers by fire, burning up the sacrifices, which is the, uh, the cut, cut bull on the altar, he is the real God. People was thinking about the proposal and the challenge given by Elijah and thought that, well, that is quite a good challenge. It is very well spoken indeed. That can show which of the God is indeed true and living God. Elijah then asked the false prophet to prepare and place the cut sacrifice bull onto the altar, but not light the fire. Then the false prophet started worshipping from morning till afternoon, calling up, Oh Baal, hear us. You know, so if you hear us, please burn up this sacrifice that is offered on the altar, which is that bull that was cut. They cried until noon and still nothing happened. Elijah even mocked them. Come on, cry louder. Isn't he, isn't Baal, your God? Is he meditating? Is he busy? Or is he on a journey, sleeping, that he is not answering your call? I don't see the bull being burnt. There is no fire anywhere. So when Elijah mocked them, all the more they cried out even, even harder, crying out to Baal. But there was no response. No one answered and no one paid attention. No fire came till evening. When evening came, it is now Elijah's turn. Elijah took 12 stones. He dug a trench and then he arranged the wood and built an altar upon the stone. And he placed the cut bull onto the wood. Now, to make things more difficult, he even asked to have four jars of water poured onto the wood as well as the bull three times. Can you imagine that the false prophet had problem to even set the, the sacrifice on fire without any water? And now Elijah is upping the challenge by pouring water, which is going to even make the burnt sacrifice more challenging. But was that a problem? Not really. When Elijah called upon the name of God, God answered powerfully. God sent a fire down from heaven, burn up the sacrifice, burn up the wood, burn up the stone, and even dry up all the water in the trench. That was how great and amazing God is. When the people saw what happened, they cried and say, the Lord, He is truly God. 
in this story, you can see that there is indeed power in the name of God. When God was called, miracles happen. Yes, and because God loves us so much, we can call upon His name, God's name, Jesus' name, or the Holy Spirit's name, anytime and anywhere. Where, whether we are afraid, whether we are happy, or we are sad, we can always call upon His name and there is power in His name. We can also talk and pray to Jesus, but we have to always remember to use His name respectfully. So to summarize, let us respect, speak positively to each other and build each other up. More important, so we have to speak respectfully to God. Let's remember this acronym THINK, T-H-I-N-K, to help us check if what we are saying is positive, is it constructive, and is it respectful. T stands for true, H stands for helpful, I stands for inspiring, N stands for necessary, K stands for kind. Make sure the things that we say are true, helpful, inspiring, necessary, and kind. Remember, boys and girls, our words that come from our mouth and our tongue can hurt or heal a person. What did your words do today? Did it hurt people? Or did it encourage and build up people? If you have the power to make someone happy, please do it because the world needs more of that. Now that leads us to our memory verse for this week, which is taken from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. It says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Are you speaking life today? Boys and girls, shall we now try reciting the memory verse again? Are you ready? Let's recite together. One, two, three. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Very good. Now, can we try reciting it again? But this time, I will remove the word and, are, and. Shall we try? Ready? One, two, three, go. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Very good. Now, let's try reciting again, this time with more words removed. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Very well. Now, with even more words removed. Let's try to recite it together. Okay? One, two, three, go. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Very good. Now, finally, with all the words removed, I know you all can do it. Let's recite it together aloud. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Very well done. Give us a little pat. Very good. Remember, boys and girls, that whatever we say, it can bring life or it can bring destruction. Hence, we should always be careful with what we say and control our tongue. Let us always remember to be respectful in the things that we say and to speak of positive things and also to speak of things which encourages and builds up people. Yeah? Can we do it? 
And remember to always be respectful to our daddy, mummy, to our teachers, to our friends, to the elderly people, to everyone, especially to God. Boys and girls, before we end the session, let us just commit the time to the Lord in prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Father, for this time that we can learn English as well as learning your word. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to be respectful and to speak well to people as well as to you. Father, we pray and reject, Lord Father, all hurtful and negative words that we've said in the past. And we reject, Lord Father, uh, all these words from being said in future. We pray that, Lord, you guard over our tongue and you guard over our mind, that we'll be careful with what we say and what we, we do to people, that we'll always be um, you know, respectful to people. And let words that come out from our mouth, Lord Father, be positive, be encouraging, and be building, Lord Father. We pray also that, Lord, that Lord, you, you, you will remind us to always be respectful, Lord Father, to our parents, to our teachers, to our friends, to, the, to all people that we meet. And most importantly, Lord Father, remind us, Lord Father, to be respectful to you at all times. We thank you, Lord Father, for your love for us and for and, and recognizing, Lord Father, there is indeed power in your name. And because of your love, Lord Father, for us, we can call upon you anytime, Lord Father, whether we are happy or we are sad or when we are in trouble. Lord, you will always there for you will always be there for us when we call upon your name. We thank you, Lord Father, for that. And Lord Remind us again, Lord Father, never to misuse the name, your name, Lord Father, because there is power in your name and we should be, respect, be respectful of it, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father, for today, for, for the lesson today. And Lord, we pray, Lord Father, for weeks to come that, Lord, you continue to mold us, Lord Father, to be respectful people, Lord Father. And Lord Father, to continue to have a great and safe week ahead. Thank you, Lord. We commit ourselves to your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all I have for this week. Hope you all enjoyed this lesson. Uh, we'll see you all in the next Ikids lesson. Then, See you all then. Bye. Hello, children. My name is Mrs. Froggy. How are you today? What did you learn just now? Hi, I am Teacher Patricia again. Do you know what we are going to do today? Yes, we're going to make a frog. You can make either a male frog or a female frog. They can talk. It's telling us be respectful, speak well. Aren't they cute? Yes, I find it very cute. You can do it too. Let's do it together. Materials you need A4 paper. Uh, a red uh, strips of paper uh, some uh, color paper can be present paper yeah any paper can do uh, a white paper if you don't have a uh, uh, both side you don't need to have both side just one side enough any paper can do as long as you have white uh, one side of the paper scissor uh, ruler, pencil, some uh, color and marker pen, yeah, and uh, rubber, yeah, pencil, and uh, sharpener. This sharpener is not to sharpen the pencil, but to use it to draw the shape of the eye, yeah. Okay, let's get started. Uh, A4 paper. First, make a square. You fold like this very neatly and then fold it here exactly at this line yeah, so that you can get a square. This and open up and cut this line if you have a pen knife it will be good if you don't then you can use a scissor okay. 
this piece you put aside because we are going to uh, need this piece of paper letter. Now, you have a square. Now you fold into half. Fold again into half. Okay. This is to make uh, a, a center point. This is the center point. Yeah, it's the center point. Okay. Now, uh, fold the each corner of the paper to the center point. Turn it to the other side. Fold the upper corner, the two upper corner, to the center point again. Turn it to the front. Uh, fold the top corner downward to the center point here. And the side also fold it to the center line. It's the center line. shape. Now, turn to the back. You see you got two pockets here, two square pockets. You push the pockets up to open up. This will be the frog's eye. Then this side also, push it up. Make the eyes. Okay. Now turn it to the front again. Right. We'll see something like this. Okay. Now take the remainder piece of paper just now. You fold it to make the strips. The strips. Just keep on folding the paper half each time. Yeah, and then half again. Okay, then you get a strip of paper. Now Slit this piece of paper underneath. Push this up. This is the mouth, the frog's mouth. You push it up all the way up. Okay, and then these strips of paper push under the mouth right to the top end. Like this, right, right to the top end. Then push it down, push it back this 
Okay. Like this, yeah? Then when you pull the strips of paper, the mouth will close and open like this. Okay, it's like the frog is talking. Okay, now you have done the frog. Now we want to make the eyes here and also uh, the tongue. Yeah, and uh, to hold this strip of paper from coming out, you make uh, some uh, uh, shapes to uh, go across this opening here. Yeah, whether you want to uh, make a heart shape here, yeah, or a ribbon, or a tie, or just uh, strips of paper, yeah, anything you want. It's up to you, your creativity yeah, to decorate the frogs, the frog. Okay, now let's uh, make the eye. Yeah. For the eye, it just uh, you fold this white paper together so that you can cut out two eyes at the, at one time. Okay. It will be better if the eye you use uh, thicker paper like a drawing block or any other uh, paper from uh, cards and uh, other papers, yeah, which is white in color. Then, right, then you draw the For the eye, some of you can draw beautiful eyes, yeah, different shapes of eyes. Looking downward, looking side, looking upward. Okay, this one is looking the middle. Yeah. Okay. Frog eyes. Then for the tongue, this one is for the tongue. Stick it in the mouth. Like this. 
So for this part, you either you know you want to make a heart shape. I will teach you how to make a heart shape. For the heart shape, you just use a piece of paper, any type, any color of paper can be used. You draw a heart shape. A heart shape, you just draw something like a D like that. Yeah? Just say like this, how big you want. You want to draw, you want to make three also can, yeah? small three hearts one here 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 like this yeah? or you can make one big one and two small one like this yeah and you can have a, a smaller one like this then cut the shape out One big one up here and one small one. Then it's up to you eh, whether you want to stick the hearts or uh, tie. You can put a tie here. Yeah. Ribbon. Or just a strips of colored paper or any design eh, from your present paper. Like this. As long as it uh, prevent the strips from coming coming out when you pull the mouth when you pull the strips up and down yeah? okay like this okay your frog is done now the most important thing is you must write down the theme of today's lesson you can write any way you want at the side, yeah, top side, or at the body, yeah. or you can write side like this. B. Respect. B E B R E S P E C T F U L Be respectful Speak well Be respectful I guess right here Speak well S P E A K Speak W E L L Speak well Okay 
Then turn to the back, write the Bible verse. Life and death. L I A F E life A N D and death D E A T H life and death R A R E I N in T H E life and death are in the power P O W E R power of O F T H E power of the sun T O N G U E sang. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Stacken from the Bible. Proverbs P R O V E R B S. Proverbs chapter eighteen. Verse 21. Okay. Now your frog is done. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18 verse 21. Okay. Now your frog is done. It's time for you to decorate the frog. Okay. See this frog here? It's a male frog. It's a female frog. Yeah. Now, it's up to you to decorate. If this is, I think this is a female frog because the color is pink. Draw a pink chick here. Yeah, draw a pink chick. Yeah, and then the nose, you can draw the two dots here. It's the nose, it's two dots, the nose. Yeah. Cheek, red cheek, and then the rest up to you to decorate. Yeah, how do you want to decorate? Decorate it and have dots. Yeah, dots here and there. Some big dots, some small dots. You want some more hearts? Okay, some more hearts. Okay, some more dots here, here and there. Okay. Some more hearts here. Teacher is not so creative, so you are more creative, you can decorate your frog. So the frog is done. Okay, isn't it cute? I find it so cute. I hope you can make one for yourself. And remember, every time you see this frog, remember the lessons for today. Be respectful. Speak well. Okay. Bye, children. I remember, after you make one, take a picture, send it to us. We will be very excited to see your froggy. Hi, children. Uncle will introduce you to the game that Uncle played with Auntie just now. But first, come over here so that we can look at the materials that we need. Firstly, we need some paper, cardboard paper, because it's uh, 
part. Cut it out. The measurement is about 7 inches or about 19 centimeters. And where do you get these uh, cut boards? You can cut it out from all uh, greeting cards like Chinese New Year card. Here, Uncle cut it out from a, an old piece of uh, Chinese New Year card. So cut it out and if it's white inside, it's nothing inside, it's good so that you can write on it but if it is colored or there are some pictures here what you can do is you cut out a piece of white paper and stick on it so that you can write and you can fold, fold it so the next thing to do is uh, to fold it you fold it uh, in the middle in the center and then open it up so that it is 90 degree and you can put it on the table like this so as you can see all these cards are being prepared some uh, you can uh, uh, hand write it and this is handwritten or you can uh, print it so uncle has printed uh, God love you here uh, for the game next you will need to prepare some straws a sick one so maybe some you say we don't have a sick one if you don't have a straws at home you can also take a piece of paper and then roll it up roll it up and stick it together like this so that you can prepare for example this one pink color for mommy or you can roll another one blue color a longer one for daddy so that the, the whole family can play this game together so children okay now i'm going to introduce you to the rules of the game now you can play with your family members and in this case i play with my papa uh, he's playing with his papa okay so i'm the papa so let's look at this card the purpose of the game is to blow the card from one side to the other and to ensure that when you blow the card it will move to the edge of the table to the side and when it drop it is just hanging on the table and not drop down so if it drops down you have to take it and restart try it one more time okay are you ready let's try let's see how song yang and papa will compete to blow this to the side of the table see who can uh, succeed to blow the most cut hanging and keep it hanging okay one two go <laughs> oh man try again oh no try again let's try let's try come on we can do it we can do it let's try again Yeah, children, as you can see, it's not easy, right, if you play alone and compete. So, what you can do is to think, huh, one of the ways is to cooperate. So, you can ask your daddy to blow and you can blow from the opposite side. Like in this case, Sung Yang will blow from the other side and daddy will blow from this side.
Yes. yes. So this is called cooperation. You do things together. Just like you can cooperate with daddy or cooperate with Coco or Tete or mommy. So that the whole family can play together, right? Okay, let's try another one. Yeah! Got it? Good. Hi children, I hope you have learned something interesting today. Yes, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. Remember, you are made by God. So let us respect and honor God. Well, you can do so beginning from your home, respecting and honoring the mem all members of your family. So before we end, I ask Auntie Chiling uh, to have a closing prayer. Chinatienfu 舌头不说坏话，嘴唇也不说欺骗的话，我们的言语常常带着和气，随时说鼓励的好话，让听见的人得到帮助。求你帮助我们在行为和言语上做个好孩子，得到神和人的欢喜。我们奉耶稣的名